All right, so we are now on to the next chapter in Apex Calculus, which is curves in the plane. Okay. Uh, the first section covers conic sections. Now, this is something that used to be review. Um, conic sections used to be standard material, part of the high school curriculum. Um, but a lot of jurisdictions, including uh, Alberta, where University of Lethbridge is based, have decided that they're, uh, let's say, no longer hooked on conics. So they've dropped it from the curriculum. Students don't see it. Which is sad because conics include things like circles, right? You would hope that somebody coming to university and doing a math program at university knows what a circle is on the way in. And they, they do, but even things like the equation of a circle, maybe you've seen it in the context of the unit circle for trig functions, but have you seen the general equation for a circle? Not everyone has. Sometimes people are seeing that for the first time when they get to Calc 2. Sometimes surprising to us when we're teaching the university that that's where it's at, but seems to be the way it goes, so we'll cover it now, right? So, conic sections, what are they? So the conic sections include parabolas, okay, they include ellipses, and a special case of, of the ellipse is a circle, okay. And hyperbolas, right? Along with a number of kind of, shall we say, sort of degenerate cases, um, things like a single point or a line or a pair of lines, uh, these sort of also fit into the picture. Okay? But these are the three kind of primary types of conic sections that one would study um, if you're studying conic sections. Okay? So all of these are quadratic curves in the plane. Okay? So all of them, they fit sort of a general form, right? So the general sort of equation for all of the conic sections looks something like ax squared plus by squared. Um, and there might be like a cross term, like a c times xy. And there could be a linear term in x. And there could be a linear term in y. Um, and there could be a constant term, maybe f. Okay? So general, kind of the most general equation that defines a conic section looks something like this. And you can actually capture all possible cases with an expression of this form. Okay? Um, now, one sort of, you know, minor concession that we make when we're doing this in Calculus 2 is we typically, typically we set C equal to zero. We like to not have cross terms, okay? Um, and you can deal with conic sections that have those cross terms, and you might see this in a linear algebra course, because it turns out that um, if you ignore the lower order stuff, and you kind of can, because, you know, think about if like that's gone, you can sort of complete the square in x and you can complete the square in y, right? And so if you, once you set c equal to 0, you kind of have something that looks like, you know, a times maybe x minus a squared b times y minus b squared. Um, now, there, there's a flaw with this. I'll, I'll play, explain it in a second, plus maybe g equals 0. Um, that, that's all well and good. Um, assuming that a and b are uh, non-zero, this is not quite valid if, say, for example, if a is equal to 0, right? Because if a is equal to 0, well, then I can't absorb that linear term, right? Um, so maybe I can't quite do this. Um, and parabolas, we'll see that parabolas are going to be exactly what happens when one of these two is zero, right? One of either A or B will be zero. Um, these will be non-zero, at least one of them, right? Um, we know a usual parabola like x equal, you know, y equals x squared. That's a common parabola that we've already dealt with, right? We're familiar with that. Um, so you can play games like this, right? And you can start looking at like sort of, okay, this is the most general thing but we can make some simplifications so that, you know, this is less general, but not that much less general. Um, 
What do you do with the missing cross term? Well, one of the things that you can learn in like a linear algebra course is that you can study what are called quadratic forms, which are sort of like things that look like, you know, a number times x squared, number times y squared. Um, these are quadratic forms. And you can study these using linear algebra and, and matrices and actually things like eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And you can show that in general, if you have a cross term like this, there's always a change of variables that you can use to eliminate that cross term, right? And so you can deal with the um, conic sections that don't have cross terms by a change of variables. And it turns out also that the effect of that change of variables is just a rotation in your coordinate axes, right? Um, so conics that have cross terms are just rotated versions of conics without cross terms. And so we work on understanding what they look like without the cross term. And then later on, if we are really interested, we can do a bit of linear algebra and factor in the rotations, right? But that's a topic for another course. Um, before we move on, look at examples. Why conic sections? Where does the name come from? Well, the name comes from the fact that the conic sections actually come from cutting, well, a cone, OK? So you can draw this so-called double-naped cone. Looks something like this, right? So, and, and actually, in, uh, in a later calculus course, like a Calc 3 or a Calc 4, you might actually learn that you can describe this cone in, in equations. This is an example of what's called a quadric surface. Uh, this cone satisfies an equation like x squared plus y squared equals z squared, if you introduce a third coordinate, right? Working in three dimensions, you can do something like that. And so where the conic sections come from, they come from what happens if you take a cone and you cut it with a plane. So you take a plane and you intersect the, the cone. And depending on the orientation of the plane, depending on the angle of the plane, and depending on things like, is that plane angled kind of less than this 45 degree or more? Um, or, you know, once you tilt it kind of far enough, you actually cut both halves of the cone. Um, so there are different kind of angles that the cone might take. But it might happen, for example, that you intersect along, let's say, a circle or an ellipse, right? If it's an angle, you get an ellipse. Cutting with a horizontal plane gives you a circle. If you cut with a horizontal plane, you get a circle. If you tilt a little bit, you get an ellipse. Tilt some more, and you might get a parabola. You might get something which actually just kind of goes up like that. It misses the other end, so it never quite intersects. You get a parabola. Tilt even more, and you might get a hyperbola, something which kind of comes, let's say, down here, back up the other side, and then there's a corresponding piece on the other side of the cone, right? Um, so all of these conic sections, parabolas, right, parabolas which tend to look something like this, ellipses like this, hyperbolas which tend to look like that, right? You can, you can actually obtain all of them by taking a plane and cutting the cone. Um, and one of the exercises you might do if you're, once you're comfortable working in more than two variables, right, once you get to like um, calculus and several variables or you've done some linear algebra, um, you learn how to write things like equations of planes. Um, that's the next chapter in APEX. Uh, you can actually play around with, well, what if I take this equation and I write down the equation of a plane? Turns out, you know, a plane is going to look something like, you know, AX plus BY plus CZ is equal to a number. And you can kind of try to satisfy both equations at once, simplify things. And with a bit of work, you can get down to an equation that looks like this. Right? So you can sort of make sense of it all. Right? And we are, of course, going to take this analytic approach. We're going to write everything down in terms of equations, because that's what we do. right? We're doing calculus. We want to write things down in terms of equations, graph them, look at tangents, areas, things like that. Um, one of the things that you used to do when this stuff was covered in high school is you actually start, you define these curves not in terms of like this intersection with a cone, not in terms of an equation. You define them in terms of certain properties. Um, like it turns out that a parabola, the defining property for a parabola is that there's a line called a directrix and there's a point called a focus. And every point on the parabola is an equal distance from that line 
and from the focus. Those two points are, those two distances are always the same. Um, an ellipse has a pair of foci, one, two. And it turns out that for any point on the ellipse, the sum of those two distances is, is constant, right? For hyperbola, there's a similar thing with, there's foci and you look at difference of distances. So you can, you can define things like this and then one of these kind of exercises that you used to do when you were first learning about like the Cartesian coordinate system and analytic geometry and translating from pictures to equations is, well, how do you take something like this condition and turn it into an equation? Well, we know how to write down the formula for the distance between a point and a line. We know how to write down the formula for the distance between two points. And you equate those, you do some algebra, you get the equation of a parabola. Um, so these are games that used to be played in high school. You may not have done them because they've been dropped from your high school curriculum, but you'll see a little bit of it here in Apex Calculus.